Today, we are diving deep into every Mandela effect on SpongeBob I could find online. From the ones that make me think I have severe brain damage to the ones that are just, uh... <laughs> The Mandela Effect is a term used to describe a phenomenon where many people remember something in a particular way, but it turns out to be completely different from what actually happened. Now, while some Mandela Effects are pretty much just a reach that eat away at my last living brain cells, there are some that even I remember as a kid that never even happened. And I was a teenage Gary, Patrick shows up and tells Spongebob about this jellyfishing convention in Ukulele Bottom. Spongebob can't take Gary with him, so he asks Squidward to feed Gary while he's away. He even leaves huge cans of snail food labeled morning and night to make sure it's super easy. But Squidward, just wanting some peace and quiet, says he'll do it just to get Patrick and Spongebob off his hair. Once they leave, Squidward totally forgets about Gary and just sunbathes all weekend long. Poor Gary's left alone feeling neglected, and when Spongebob returns, Squidward suddenly remembers about Gary and finds him super sick. Squidward even tries to feed Gary, but he's just way too weak. Spongebob freaks out, and he ends up calling the vet. Now, the vet leaves a syringe of snail plasma for Gary. Squidward accidentally injects Spongebob with the plasma, and Spongebob starts turning into a snail. He freaks out and goes to Squidward for help, but Squidward's terrified and tries to hide from snail Spongebob. Eventually, in the chaos, Squidward also gets injected with with the plasma and turns into a snail as well. Now, for the longest time, there was this rumor going around that there was also a scene where Squidward goes through the same similar freaky transformation as SpongeBob. People thought this scene was so scary for kids that it actually got cut out of reruns. Do you remember seeing Squid's transformation? This is one that I'm gonna say I feel like I did, but it turns out the whole Squidward transformation scene is just a myth. Some people thought there was evidence of this because of a weird transition in the episode, right when Squidward gets hit with a needle and then suddenly Suddenly he's a snail. Some fans even thought the original version of the extra scene was still airing in Poland, but that was also very soon proven wrong. And to put a final nail in the coffin, Vincent Waller, the current showrunner of Spongebob, confirmed that this so-called deleted scene was never even drawn in the storyboard of the episode. However, the original outline of the story revealed that the transformation scene was considered at some point before the script and storyboard were finalized. The fact that the scene transformation was considered at some point is what really freaks me out here. Like, is there some parallel universe out there where they did go ahead with the idea and for some reason it's just stuck in our brains now? In the secret box, Patrick reveals to Spongebob that he has, well, a secret box. Naturally, Spongebob's curiosity goes wild, and he desperately wants to figure out what's inside this box. Patrick, however, refuses to show him, saying it's a secret. This only fuels Spongebob's curiosity more. The episode revolves around Spongebob's various attempts to find out what's in the box. He tries everything from sweet-talking Patrick to sneaking into his house at night. He even starts conjuring up some wild ideas of what could be in the box, and the tension builds as Spongebob SpongeBob's curiosity turns into an obsession. In a twist ending, Patrick finally reveals the box is empty, except for a string. But when SpongeBob isn't looking, Patrick pulls the string, revealing a secret compartment with an embarrassing snapshot of SpongeBob at the Christmas party. The episode ends with Patrick laughing, but the thing is, despite the vividness of these scenes, many viewers recall a detail that never actually happens. Many viewers remember seeing the embarrassing photo of SpongeBob in a Santa outfit being revealed at the end of the episode. However, this photo is never actually shown in the episode. Now look, I can agree here and say a lot of these Mandela effects are kind of a reach, but guys, this one, I mean, I really feel like I saw Spongebob in that Santa outfit. I rem like, Right now, as I'm recording this video, I feel like I can see Spongebob in a Santa outfit, and that's how the actual episode ended. Like, how are you gonna tell me this never happened? You're telling me my brain is just making all of this stuff up? The episode Your Shoes on Ties starts with Spongebob watching a little, uh, you know, you know what he's watching. Come on. Patrick comes bursting through the door with his hands inside a pair of new shoes. Patrick confesses that he does not know how to tie his laces. SpongeBob then agrees to teach Patrick by untying his shoes to demonstrate. However, SpongeBob's attempts to tie them fail again and again. He then makes up an excuse so Patrick can leave, saying that he will have to just do the lessons later, and SpongeBob faces the realization that he has forgotten how to tie his shoes. The next morning, he starts tripping over his untied laces every step of the way to the Krusty Krab. He tries to hide his untied laces from Patrick and even tries to 
manage his duties leading to a series of mishaps. Mr. Krabs then becomes aware of the situation when customers leave due to SpongeBob's accidents. Desperate for help, SpongeBob asks various of characters for help tying his shoes, but none can assist him. The Flying Dutchman appears confident in his not tying abilities, but he too fails to help SpongeBob with his shoelaces, as he, being a ghost, does not wear shoes. Finally, SpongeBob returns home, depressed, believing his shoes will remain untied forever. However, SpongeBob gets a surprise when this happens. The episode then goes into a musical where Gary teaches Spongebob how to tie his shoes properly. But here's the kicker. While this episode does show Spongebob learning how to tie his shoes, the actual character design of Spongebob does not have shoelaces. One anonymous Reddit user posted about this a few years back and the internet was divided into two. There was one side that believes Spongebob always had shoelaces and then there was the other side of people that thought they were just crazy. But in reality, Spongebob actually never had shoelaces. This is one of, if not the only episode where you can clearly see why laces on Spongebob's shoes. Personally, I never paid that much attention to Spongebob's shoes, so I can't say for sure if I do remember seeing white laces, but I don't know, what do you think? Do you remember seeing Spongebob with laces? In the Mr. Krabs one millionth dollar episode, one of the customers finishes ordering and Mr. Krabs runs out of his office and announces that he just gave him his millionth dollar. After kicking the customers out, Mr. Krabs decides to take Spongebob and Squidward on a fishing trip with his millionth dollar. On the boat, Spongebob plays with his fishing rod and ends up hooking the dollar in the lagoon. I thought she was a gunner. SpongeBob and Squidward then decide they just want to give Mr. Krabs a random dollar and say it was his millionth dollar. Mr. Krabs notices this almost immediately and says, This isn't me millionth dollar. This is an ordinary dollar that's been crumpled up, torn slightly, soaked in a lagoon, and kissed with coral blue number two semi gloss lipstick. And many people remember SpongeBob correcting Mr. Krabs, saying, actually, it's Coral Blue number five, and then getting hit by a fishing rod. In reality, SpongeBob gets hit with the fishing rod right before he was about to say number five. Actually, it's Coral Blue number three. So he actually never got the chance to say it. Now, this episode was a part of the SpongeBob Golden Ages, and I'll be honest with you, I remember SpongeBob finishing this sentence. Like, these are the kind of moments that make me feel, am I living in a parallel universe? And how come when I ask my friends about this, they're just like, dude, who cares? Anyways, in the SpongeBob movie, Plankton comes up with a sneaky plan to take over the entire Bikini Bottom. He uses these special helmets to control everyone's mind. Now SpongeBob, who everyone thinks is just a fun-loving, goofy guy, steps up big time. Towards the end of the movie, SpongeBob grabs a guitar and just like that, everyone is set free from Plankton's control. But here's where our memory plays a trick on us. People, including myself, remember the guitar very differently. Some people think it was a white or purple V-shaped guitar, but in reality, it's a peanut-shaped guitar. What? The whole mix-up started popping up online around 2019 and then really blew up on TikTok in late 2022. People just couldn't believe it was a peanut guitar and not the other shapes they remembered. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the confusion might come from another episode, Band Geeks, where Sandy is seen playing a purple V-shaped guitar. So people might be mixing up these two different scenes, but I don't know, there's a ton of TikToks posted with people freaking out over this, with some even pulling out the original DVD to prove it's always been a peanut guitar. The Krusty Krab training video episode of Spongebob is a hilarious take on those corporate training videos. The episode is presented as an educational video for new employees of the Krusty Krab. As the episode progresses, the training video becomes increasingly weird with very bizarre tips. Interfacing with your boss. Mr. Krabs, can I have a raise? No. The whole episode is a big dramatic buildup to finally reveal the Krabby Patty secret formula. But right as that crucial moment was about to happen, the video abruptly ends, leaving the formula a mystery. No formula, no ingredients, nothing. It just ends right there, leaving everyone hanging. Now here's where the Mandela effect comes into play. Despite the episode clearly ending without revealing the formula, many fans remember it differently. They recall the narrator actually starting to list some of the ingredients of the Krabby Patty formula. While I remember this episode very vividly, I actually don't remember that happening. I remember this episode ending just how I described, but there's a lot of people online that says otherwise. See, one of the fascinating aspects of the Mandela effect is how it reflects the power of anticipation and expectation. Like the setup in the episode is perfect. The narrator's build up to the big reveal of the Krabby Patty formula creates a sense of excitement and curiosity. Viewers are on the edge of their seats waiting for the secret formula to be revealed. This level of anticipation might be why so many people believe they heard the formula being revealed, even though it actually never happened. 
Now, I've talked about the pickles episode on this channel before, but never the Mandela effect in it. And I'm not gonna lie, this Mandela effect really tripped me out. Bubble Bass confronts SpongeBob saying he forgot the pickles on his burger. SpongeBob then gets super sad believing he's not a worthy fry cook. But the thing is, Bubble Bass had the pickles in his mouth the whole time. Now, the Mandela effect comes into play when he gets exposed. This happens. Look, he's been hiding the pickles under his tongue the whole time. And there's the pickles from last time too. And there's my car keys. And there's my ride. Wait, 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 wait. That's it? Okay, so here's where the Mandela effect comes in. And even I believe this. Like, I could have sworn more people shouted out things that Bubble Bass stole from them. And I'm not the only one. Many people were called the other fish in the background screaming things like, there's my shoe and there's my wallet. But that never actually happened. Now, when I look back at the scene on Paramount Plus, it was actually a pretty short scene. And it happened so fast, it really got me believing that they cut something out. In the episode Atlantis Square Pantis, there's a specific line by Mr. Krabs that some fans remember differently. So SpongeBob and Patrick are hanging out in Jellyfish Field, right? They're doing their usual thing, blowing bubbles, and then SpongeBob whips up this massive bubble that accidentally carries them into a cave. There, they find this weird piece of gold. They take it to the Bikini Bottom Museum, thinking it's some cool artifact. At the museum, they run into Squidward, who's also all about Atlantis. And guess what? The gold piece is actually a part of a lost relic of Atlantis. Suddenly, things get wacky. They put the relic together, and boom, this magical bus appears and takes them to Atlantis. The bus runs on song fuel, which is just as nuts as it sounds, so the whole gang has to sing a song. SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, Mr. Krabs, Sandy, and even Plankton set off to Atlantis. There's a specific line by Mr. Krabs that some fans remember differently. Now, the debate revolves around whether Mr. Krabs says, I'm Eugene, I love money, or I'm Eugene, I like money. Given Mr. Krabs' well-known obsession with money, many fans remember it would be more characteristic of him to say, I love money. But in reality, he just said, I'm Eugene, I like money. Additionally, there's mentions of another potential Mandela effect in the same episode. It suggested that Mr. Krabs was supposed to say, I always knew me true color was green, followed by a laugh, before continuing the next part of the song. However, in the original version, the laugh seems to be missing, leading to further speculations about the changes in the episode. I always knew that me true color was green. Oh, it now, I'll be honest, while I do remember this episode when it came out, this detail is so small, I can't even say I remember it, to be honest. But it does kind of remind me of that one Star Wars Mandela effect, where people think Darth Vader said, Luke, I am your father, when in reality, he said, no, I am your father. But yeah, if you guys have any other Mandela effects in SpongeBob that you think I missed, let me know in the comment section down below, and maybe I'll make a part two. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one.